Overcoming limiting beliefs is what's going to make the difference between success and failure in real estate investing. Today in this video, we're going to go through a few different clips where I talk on a Zoom with different real estate investors and they all have varying limiting beliefs that are preventing them from doing consistent deals. So we're gonna go through those, analyze their mindset and try to help them overcome those. That way they can get those deals. The first investor I talk to has a limiting belief that what he has to offer is not valuable or perhaps he's doing the wrong thing to the seller. There's this belief in this country that investors are scumbags or lowlifes or for them to win, someone else has to lose. So in this scenario, the investor doesn't think what he has to offer is the right thing for the seller. And I walk him through multiple scenarios of how something could play out and show him that an investor offer could truly be valuable, even if the seller makes a little bit less. So no, you guys know I've been really excited about getting into this um, and like just starting taking action, really meeting with sellers, you know, door knocking, um, texting, calling, reaching out about a week ago. And just as I'm getting educated, uh, I went to actually like an one of the auctions yesterday and there were a few houses that went to auction that it actually sold for probably just about what it would sell for if it were listed on the MLS. And, and for that person, it made me wonder, well, maybe they were best off letting it go to auction, right? And if I had gotten involved, maybe it wouldn't have gone that route. Now I know that that's like one person, other people, they don't like, they, they want alternatives and I, I can't know what it, their house is going to sell for at auction, but I do know I can help them. And I, I don't bring this up to be negative. I bring it up to, to say like, I don't want to have a mindset issue where I don't believe that I'm helping in the, in the best way. But does that make sense? And I just, I don't want to go forward with this belief that like, I want to help so badly, but what if the best thing is not my help? And sometimes that's true, but imagine this scenario, okay? I went and helped a seller out. I stopped their foreclosure sale. I got them a lot of money in their pocket, okay? My team then helped them find new housing. My team moved them there. My team got them settled. My team then got them into credit counseling, hooked them up with a lender that then over the process over the next 24 months can hopefully get them approved for something else. Mm -hmm. I've also provided them with resources <clears throat> if they you know, are short on food. Here's some food banks. Here is some different substance abuse groups. Whatever their situation is, I provide value. Okay. okay. Scenario one. Scenario two, you don't come along. House forecloses. Investor at the courthouse steps is ruthless. Investor at the courthouse steps couldn't care less about that person. They might be a hedge fund. And actually, they I would say, I think the two houses that sold yesterday went to the same individual. And my friend and I that were there, he's more experienced with auctions. We both were like, there's no way this is just a local investor. No. So many of them okay. that are buying at retail are hedge funds. That's yeah. why I don't go to the courthouse steps because I get blown out of the water. It doesn't mm -hmm. even make sense. What do they do? They knock on the person's house, tell them to get out, file an eviction the next day, post that on the door, however long it takes in that place, three weeks, four weeks, whatever it is, depending on the state, might take longer or less. They drag that person. What if it's a what's it's like an 80 year old woman yeah that her husband passed away and the sheriff's pulling that woman out of the house and she has nowhere to go just imagine that yeah okay but same thing you. yeah but let's say let's say you're off let, let's say they owed a hundred right mm -hmm. you could offer 130 i'm making up numbers sure but it went for 200 at the foreclosure sale and it's like hmm Sometimes you have a tough time rationalizing that extra 70 grand. Mm -hmm. But these people have no idea they can collect overages on foreclosure sales. Mm -hmm. Most of that money sits in a slush fund with the county and then the county goes and does whatever the heck with it. They can't afford really? the attorney to be able to do that. And guess what? If they want to let it foreclose and that's a better option, you can help them collect the surplus. Yeah. So okay. there's no matter what, there's a way you can serve. Yeah. 
But you're going to have to get over that limiting belief that you're not valuable. No. And, and, and that's the thing is going into this, like the last two months, even the last week, I've actually felt totally on fire and excited. And Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm absolutely able to help these people based on what you guys have taught of coming from a place of service and being detached from the outcome. Like, I feel like that gives me an ability to help, even if it means I don't make any money. It was just this belief that, but what if I'm not doing the right thing? And so I think you addressed it and and I really appreciate it because I've been learning about mindset a lot lately. And like, if I were to have held on to that belief without you guys helping me get through it, it could totally impact me going forward. I still think that from time to time, like I'll make 50 grand on a deal and it's like, do I feel right about that? I, I talk about being a believer a lot. People don't like that I talk about it. But sometimes I will flat out pray about any given situation and be like, is this the right thing to do? Mm -hmm. Should I offer more? Should I make less for our company on this one? What should I do to make it right for this individual? I just think of it as what on earth would that seller do? 80 year old woman, no spouse with a foreclosure on her record, awful credit. Someone bought it at the courthouse steps no resources. What on earth is that person going to do? Yeah, a hundred percent. So um, is there is there a trade of equity for speed and convenience and making sure they're in a better place? Sure. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, I think about what's worse. <laughs> Them yeah. working with our team and being treated like a king or queen to the best of our yeah. ability, getting them in a new house, that's much better in terms of how well kempt it is. Mm-hmm. Having a whole team trying to get their credit, their money situation right, or the person at the at the courthouse that is a corporation. <laughs> They're a corporation. <laughs> yeah. Or a cutthroat investor that does not care. Okay. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Very helpful. In the second clip, the investor is really scared to talk to any type of seller. He wants a perfectly curated situation where he has the perfect script and the perfect scenario and the perfect solution, but he's afraid to go out there and take action. Also notice his language when he's saying things like, I don't want to bother them. I want to be considerate. I don't want to interrupt their day. All of those things are well and good, but at the end of the day, those type of comments are just fear coming out and not wanting to talk to the seller and trying to rationalize why he shouldn't. We have to get over that limiting belief of being afraid to talk to sellers and having the perfect script to talk to them. So about door knocking, um, you know, I'm in DC market and um, I do go door knock sometimes. But, you know, I'm trying to be, you know, uh, considerate of uh, the homeowners. Like if the weather is cold, you know, do I really want to, I feel like I'm bothering them. They have to open the door in the cold weather. Uh, I wait for better weather. You know, what, what, what's your take on it? I want to immediately dispel that mental mindset. Yesterday, I went and signed a deal that'll probably make me fifty or $60,000. There's 10 inches of snow on the ground. This house had been in pre-foreclosure three times. First time, they didn't want to sell. I stopped the sale, just did a few things to get it postponed. The second time, they were waiting till the last second. I had to help them file a bankruptcy. Third time it came around, we were kind of texting back and forth, but they're not consistent sometimes, these people. So they'll text you for a few times, then they will ghost you for hours. Foreclosure sales tomorrow. I knew something needed to happen. It's like, there's 10 inches of snow out on the ground right now. I could have just said, eh, I just don't want to do it. I'll wait till they reach out. I went and door knocked the house. I had to trudge through all the snow. They opened the door up, signed the contract. We're extremely thankful. The reason they weren't reaching out is because one of their grandsons threw their phone in the toilet and it wasn't working right? Goofy. But if I didn't take the initiative to go up there, no one was finding them because they weren't posting up at the house I'm trying to buy. Completely unrelated place. No one was going to to help them. So sometimes you have to take that action. The way I think about it is if it's snowy and the roads are bad, those people are at home, baby. (laughs) You're going to have a conversation. 
And what better time is there? Yeah. Okay. Good. You know? Uh, yeah. Uh, second question I have, uh, looking another door, and I could tell that there are people inside because I could hear some music, but they would not answer the door. Um, you know, they're doing some stuff around the house. Um, would you, how long would you stay? At, because I want to be, you know, careful that not, you know. Uh, so it's like stand there for a few minutes, wait for them to finish up their business. A lot of times they'll they'll come out and they're rubbing their eyes and they were asleep or something and they'll have a conversation. Um, so if you have an inkling that they're there, don't stay for an aggressive amount of time. You obviously don't want to put yourself in a bad situation, but don't just knock and immediately roll out of there. You're you're losing opportunities. So a couple minutes is fine. Knocking two or three times is 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 great. All right. The last question I have. Um the door knocking, I found this lady that is in, it's a pre-foreclosure. And when I approached her and I started to talk to her, she's like, oh no, everything is taken care of. I mean, she immediately knew that, you know, I'm there to do something. Um, and it's like, uh, we don't have any issue. Um, I know everything is taken care of and she doesn't want to talk. And I left because she didn't want to talk to me. She didn't want me. And I felt like she didn't, didn't want to talk to me at all, you know, but I wanted to be respectful of her decision. What should I have I done differently? So the vast majority of these people, they're going to say they have it taken care of. People aren't just going to roll out the red carpet for you and say, please come in and sign the contract. They don't know you. They're going to put up a wall. You got to fight through that. So something that has worked for me in the past, hey, I'm glad you got it taken care of just so I can wipe it from my mind, take you off my list and quit bothering you. Just what what did you do to, to get it stopped? Just for, for my knowledge. There's going to be two different replies to that. Well, I just got it taken care of. Those people most definitely don't. They're lying to you. Now, if someone says, well, I've been trying to do a loan modification. I've been going through the lender. I filled out all the paperwork. They're just being kind of difficult. I'm really hoping that they can do it. They've been giving me good signs that they're going to approve me for a loan modification. Now you have an opening. You can start prodding and asking a few questions and you take it from there. So most people are, they're going to say, I've got it taken care of. And the average investors, that's going to kind of freak them out or be off putting. And they're going to say, okay, well, I'm glad you got taken care of and walk away. You're not getting many deals if you do that. Until that thing leaves that uh, attorney website that says it's canceled, I don't believe a thing that they're saying. Now I can respect them. But got to puncture that first level of resistance, questioning, trying to find an opening. Um, I have one mindset uh, question. You know, when I'm door knocking, you know, I do door knock. I force myself, but I still have fear. Good for you. I have the note. Me too. And, I leave, and sometimes like I knock on the door, they don't answer. I just put the door note and just leave fast. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I did my door knocking, but I know that's. I have the fear still, like, when, what if somebody get pissed off? I hadn't door knocked a, a house for probably about a month before last night. And even though I've done it, I have proof of concept and now I can do it. The heart was still going a little bit quicker than normal. So that doesn't go away. That's okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that just means that you're uncomfortable and you're about to experience something where you're going to learn. Great. Absolutely. And I get scared like when I've, I do it. I've, I've door knocked thousands of doors. I would say on the on one hand is the amount of people that got mad in a way that I was uncomfortable and didn't feel safe. Very, very, very rare. Most people, if they're going to get mad, they're just very dismissive. You know, I don't want to talk. Get off my property. It'll happen. So what? Those aren't your people at least not right now. Okay, and it takes enough marketing efforts, enough conversations to get those people to follow out the bottom of your funnel. And if you're sitting at home thinking, well, what about my contract? What if they're going to say this? Well, I got to get my CRM. Which dialer am I going to use? I see your guys' comments in the side chat asking for all my systems. Who gives a crap about all the systems if you haven't done a deal? Hey, okay? Don't go spend thousands of dollars on systems if you ain't got a deal. I made a million dollars. I said that at the beginning of the Zoom, the first 18 months with a pencil and paper. 
and persistence. As you get better, invest in systems, yes. But stop overthinking the stuff. Get out there, have the conversations, do the marketing. People will go through your funnel. They will fall out the bottom. Great, thank you so much. In this last clip, the investor is struggling with imposter syndrome and perhaps some fear of the unknown. He is afraid to get into situations where he doesn't know the answer or doesn't know what to do next. You'll hear him talk about, I don't know how to fill out the contract. I don't know how to answer this question with the seller. Guys, learning takes place through action. It's okay if you don't know the perfect solution the first time. The seller doesn't understand the situation either. It's okay to bring in a third party or a trusted other investor in your market. Do a JV. Do not let the fear of the unknown stop you from taking action. Listen to this clip as we kind of address some of those things. Michael, I wanted to say first, I watch all of your YouTube videos. So please keep on posting your content. You got it, dude. Because I do, I like, I'll, I'll like wash the dishes, like clean up my house and I have you on in the background. One that I keep watching was you door knocked like a really, really nice house because I door knocked the house near my work and near my work is like you know over half a million dollar homes and i was intimidated to go knock that house because i was like oh man i don't you know maybe i'm not worthy of going door knocking a you know a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar home and that video motivated me to go door knock that that house love that man yep uh, my my question for you was so maybe it's more of like a mindset thing is I'm really trying to push myself so I door knock I call you know I kind of say the things that you and Caroline say so I think I'm saying the the right things to push along the conversation now I'm at a point where it's like they gave me the the mortgage statement they raised their hand they said they're they're looking to sell now I'm like okay I gotta like go and actually have them like sign a contract yeah and i'm like part of my language but oh shit what do i <laughs> what do i what do i do now like do i have the right paper does it look good um uh, you know what i mean so i wasn't sure from like your experience like what like just just keep on going for it and just see what happens or like what like what is your kind of like mindset with like that you know i guess next step that i'm that i'm going through that's where you start learning, right? We can all get on here and watch content and do that. But there is that fear, that resistance when you're about to take that next step. Like, oh, they're going to think I'm stupid. They're going to point things out in the contract that are wrong. I'm not going to know the answers. Guys, these people, most of them haven't sold a house in a decade, 20 years, maybe not in their entire life. You're going to seem like an expert to them if you're just a little bit ahead. But it's also okay to have some humility in the situation and tell them, you know, I don't know all the answers, but I do have a network of people that do. Someone will know the answer. So it's okay if you don't know an answer to something, get someone on the phone. Again, these people want their problem solved. And if you're the one that's right there, you're caring about them, you're, you're trying to solve that problem, they're happy. But yeah, in terms of the, the contract, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. I've used the same one page contract for, for years and years. Does it protect me? Is it the, the most, you know, does it have the most teeth of any contract out there? No, but it protects me and it does the job to, to learn in this industry. You've got to have the conversations. You've got to go through the objections. You got to get the paper signed. You've got to start the title process. It, it can seem overwhelming when there's a bunch of pieces, but once you go through it once, it's like, oh, that wasn't, that wasn't that bad. Yep. And every time you learn something new and put a new tool in your tool belt. So yesterday I, I contacted a somebody that's in foreclosure um, and she's like, yeah, I, I called the bank once. They said basically your only option was to reinstate the loan, which is about like 25K in arrears. And I said, you know, there are other options, but ultimately, like, what are you looking to do? And she's like, I'm actually looking to sell it because the house is too big. I had some open heart surgery. I want to reduce down to a mobile home. Um, and I was like, okay, that's great. Looks like it's a good spread. About 80K uh, is the loan payoff. Um, but the ARV is about like 275, 300. 
So, you know, there's some, there's definitely some spread. And I think that's where I'm like, oh crap, now what do I do next? <laughs> what do I do next? I'm like, I just got to set the appointment, go there and just let it rip and just see what happens. So at, at the end of the day, is it kind of a fear of coming up with what your offer is, or is it a fear of, you know, not knowing what to do once you have the contract? Yeah, I think it's, I, I, I will set the expectations of like, Hey, you know, uh, with my sons, I'm like, Hey, this is just like step one of like multiple steps. So this isn't the end all be all. This is just at least to start the process. I may have to come back, you know, ask you some different questions and things like that. So I just want to make sure when I'm, you know, this is a very delicate situation with, you know, someone's personal life. And I want to make sure that's, I think the fear of it's like, I don't want to all of a sudden say, Hey, I can't help you any, anymore, but looking at the quick numbers, I'm like, this seems pretty manageable, something we could probably do. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't be fearful of asking others for help. It's, it's pretty cool. And Kansas city, I put a lot of content out here and there's a lot of guys now doing what I do. And there'll be some newer guys that come across the deal and they're like, Hey, they text me. Hey, I got this seller on the hook. I'm meeting him today. I don't really know what to say. I have no idea. Can you just help me through it? And then we end up JVing on the deal. I guarantee you there's some guys in Buffalo that are very experienced. I don't know if you've networked with them yet or have a relationship, but there's not a more comforting feeling than being able to take an address, send it to someone, trust and be like, look, I got an appointment today and kind of reverse wholesale and be like, assume that it needs a normal rehab. You know, what would be a range that you would want to be at on it? I still do that today mm -hmm. because I can comp it and know what I can pay for it. But there's something to be said to back your way into a deal. And if someone says, yep. I, I could be 300K in that area all day long and mm -hmm. you can get to the appointment and they want 250, you know, you have a spread. So finding those right. trusted contacts that one have been there, done that and can give you kind of a barometer on what you can do for a deal. Extremely valuable. Those are the only questions I had. I, I appreciate it. Cool. Let us know how it goes. Get out there and do it. And you'll afterwards you you'll be like, that wasn't too bad. And um every time you'll get a little bit better. Yep. No, I, I appreciate it. Yes, keep posting on YouTube. I love the content. Thanks. No matter where you are in this real estate journey, whether you're trying to find your first deal or your thousandth, we're all at some phase of fear or faith. Are you going to succumb to the fear of talking to people, feeling like you're not worthy, not feeling like what you have to offer is important to a seller? Or do you wanna take the faith side? What I have to offer is valuable. I can talk to that seller. I will find the answer. And if you feel that fear creeping in, try to find some other investor that you trust. Find the answers that you need and most definitely take the action that's required to get a deal. I hope this has been helpful. I'll see you on the next one.